Okay, step five is the easy one. We're going to take off the handle here. Easy, ha. Ah. Wow. Okay, that's a tight screw. It is a standard thread, it's not a reverse thread. So counterclockwise to loosen. There's the bolt, there's the handle. Whenever I'm dealing with many small parts, I like to use these divider containers, these plastic divider boxes. So I can put all the items in there. And they don't get lost. Okay, so the next step, step six is to remove the four screws that take off the side cover. So again, we're using the same tool. If it's dusty in here, not bad. Yeah, there's some dust in there. Okay, cover goes aside. Okay, so step seven is to unhook the tension spring, which is right here. I want to stay up there, so I'll leave it up there. Now we remove the screws at each end of the shaft, here and here. One screw and washer. Two screws, two washers. Now, step nine, we remove both cogs and the chain. Those come off like that. And we will set that aside over here. Okay, so step 10 is to move the drive belt, which connects the motor up here to the cutter head. First, I'm going to remove this here. The manual doesn't require you to move it, but I think it will be easier to take off the drive belt if I take this off. Okay, that's off. Now the belt, I'm just going to pull it towards me and rotate it at the same time. And I'll gradually ease it off the pulley. Drive belt is off. Now we remove the nut and the washer from the end of the pulley. Okay, so I need a 24 millimeter socket to remove the nut on the end of the cutter head. Now the problem is when I turn this, the whole cutter head turns. So there is a nut at the other end of the cutting cutter head inside the planer. I'm going to use this adjustable wrench to hold that in. too tight to loosen at all. I thought it'd be more of a challenge. So the nuts off, the pulley is what we really want. So right in here there's a slot in the pulley. That's for a key which keeps it from rotating on the shaft. When you take the pulley off, be be careful not to lose the key. Whew, that came off quickly. So the key I had it positioned at the top and the key is this little piece here. That's the key there, and it drops into the shaft right on top. So I'm going to take that out. There actually is no washer in there. There never was. So apparently the model they had when they wrote their instructions is a little bit different. Okay, so step 13 is to remove the snap ring from inside this collar here, which is the bearing housing. So snap ring pliers, got to have them for this task. Does anybody else hate snap rings? Ah, come on. 
If you're gonna ask me how long it takes to change over a cutter head, I'm gonna answer how quickly can you can you remove a snap ring? Blugger. Okay, so after 15 minutes of struggling, a little bit of cursing, a little bit of yelling, um, I got off the snap ring with a pair of snap ring pliers and a screwdriver. I hate snap rings. Okay, so I've turned the planer around for step 14. And what we need to do is remove the screws that hold on this plate here. Now the manual says to remove four screws to take off this cover. There's only three. Just when you think you're out of the woods, one, two more snap rings. Pain in the butt. Uh, so one in, out, and don't lose the snap ring. Not good. Hey, look at that. That was easy. One. These are also a good bit smaller. Oh, they're strong. Two snap rings. We're going to disconnect the spring from the tensioner right there. That'll hang there. Once again, we're taking off the chain and sprockets as a assembly. Come on. Now, on the right shaft here, there's a washer. Take that off. Okay, we're up to step 19 now, and we need to remove the three socket head screws which hold the gearbox in place. Now, that's a different size, so. I bought a set of like 32 3 inch long bits and they include these standard Phillips, Robertson and slot head drivers as well as hex and torx. So that was a great, a great little purchase. It's been very handy, the hex drivers especially. So I'm going to remove the gearbox without completely disconnecting it from the machine, as the manual says, and tap out the cutter head using a mallet and a scrap piece of hardwood here. So the gearbox comes out. Whoa. Now there's a little pin in here that's keeping it from going too far. I'm just gonna rotate it so it's out of my way. Now there's a helical gear here which you don't want to damage. That's what the hardwood blocks for. said than done. Okay. Okay, it is moving. It takes some persuasion, see? Even this uh, Wenge block, I'm using the edge green instead of the end green now. And it's still taking a dent. There we go, we're free. Okay, so next the cutter head comes out. The edges are kind of sharp here. There's no knives here, but this is just the cutter head, and there are some sharp edges. So I picked it up by the faces of the triangle rather than the edges. Okay, so we've got the stock cutter head out. Next step is to remove 
the helical gear from the end. I am going to find the appropriately sized socket. Six millimeters is the size you need. Well, that would be easier. One there, one there, and then. Oh, the smoke's in this tight though. It's the one part that we keep from the stock head and we use it with the new head. So step 23 according to the instructions is to install the bearings on the cutter head. Now this one has them already installed but from my memory when I ordered the Shedex head for my Delta jointer you can buy the cutter head either with the bearings installed or without them installed. What I did when I bought the cutter head for my Delta jointer is I bought just the cutter head without the bearings. I removed the bearings from the stock cutter head and pressed them on with a pair of parallel bar clamps. The helical gear goes on to the end with a small bearing. Now there's no hex. There's no hex or any flaps on here, so I'm just going to go fairly tight. I'm just going to go tight as I can get it now. I can get it actually pretty tight. Now it's worth noting that when I'm turning this way here, I'm turning against the direction of the cutters, so the cutters aren't pushing into my hand. If I were loosening, I'd be pushing the cutters into my hand, which I wouldn't want. Plastic actually provides a surprising amount of protection, so I feel safe doing that. If you're uncomfortable with that, by all means, put on a pair of leather gloves. So the next step is to install the cutter head back into the planer. So before we get there, I'm just going to check that the housings are clean, free of sawdust, and other stuff that might be in the way that was already cleaned. Now, it's a very tight fit in here, so the manual warns. So I want to be careful not to catch the cutters, damage them in any way as I insert the head. If you want, you could remove the cutters, and that does give you extra clearance. I had to do that on my delta jointer to avoid removing a bed, and it wasn't too big a deal. I had to remove one section of cutters. So, carefully. Slowly, carefully. So now I've got to get the plastic clear of that bushing because this bushing is a tight fit in here. So I'm going to sneak the plastic forward. Plastic side. So I'm at the point where the bushing, the bearing is fully in contact with the housing. So it's bound. Over the length, the cutter head wants to sag in a little bit. So it's actually too low at this end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap it forward until the bearing is close and then I'll align it and then I keep tapping it forward. Right now I've got about 3 eighths of an inch between the bear where the bearing meets the housing. So I'm looking inside here where the snap ring goes to see when it's fully seated. It needs a little bit, maybe a 30 second farther to go. And almost there. Okay, I think, I think that's it there. Turns freely. Happy about that. Step 26. Assembly should be done in reverse order of disassembly, taking care not to forget snap rings, tension spring connections, or washers. 